And there we go. That is everything taken down to the cam covers. Welcome back to Lone Wolf, a classic in a series. I know some of you guys have been waiting for it for a long time, close to a year. It's almost a year ago that I got this thing running for the first time in about 20 years. And when they finally wore it into life, it wasn't all 12, it did some other things. Now it runs on all 12 and actually runs pretty well. However, it sat for so long that there's quite a bit that needs to be done to any car that's been sitting for a long time, especially a V12 car, if you wanna make it a reliable daily driver. The owner of this car, my good friend Dan, who is the welder and painter we've been to a couple times, my XJS is there at the moment, is he wants this as a summer daily. So we're doing a couple things to it. In this first series, we're doing everything a car like this needs mechanically to be a daily driver. So we're doing what I call my major service, which is every coolant hose, flush the coolant system, every fuel line, go through the injectors, go through if we have any leaks, fix that, give it a new water pump, all new belts, and go through and tune it. So we're gonna do all of that. When that is done, we're going even a little bit further because this car is right-hand drive at the moment. But where I live, you want a left-hand drive car. So I picked everything that you need from a rusted out parts car to make this thing left-hand drive. So we're gonna convert it as well and that will be a separate series and quite a big job because, well, when I removed it from the parts car, that went pretty well. But I can't use the same technique putting it back in because that was just basically sawzalls and other things, just quickly getting everything out of there. But we gotta be a little bit more careful when putting this back together. Let me show you guys the immediate plan. Lots of things that we're doing to this engine I have already done on the channel. So there will be some time lapse of things. Uh, and if you wanna see more detailed things like that, I've done pretty much all of this before. But I'll show you guys some tips along the way and some tricks and hopefully at least in the first video, we're going to strip everything down to the cam covers, try and get to that. And then the video after that, we'll probably go through the cooling system and do that. And then we'll build up the fuel system and then fire this thing back up again. I've done just a couple small things to prepare and we've done other, one thing as well. We borrowed the part for something. I'll tell you guys about that. But the bonnet is off. Uh, two reasons. One is I'm going to take the radiator out and flush it because we're replacing the water pump. I always replace water pumps on V12s if they've been standing for a while. If it's an original car and it's been running the whole time, the water pump is usually fine. But this one, it wasn't leaking before. Ran it for about half an hour. The next day I came in, there was a slight puddle under the water pump. So it never fails to fail a water pump that's been sitting for 20 years. So that's one reason to make that a little bit easier, but also because I'm filming for you guys, so you guys wouldn't see anything if there was a bonnet up here in the way. Uh, another thing is, it's just very simple to remove on an XJS, remove the grill, four bolts, and it lifts out. So you get a lot of access for just a tiny, tiny bit of extra work. The one part that's been robbed of this car is inside the distributor. I grabbed the little pickup just to help another car get on the road to try some things. It's gonna go back into this car because I have a new one for the other one. But other than that, everything is in place well, except the belt but everything else is in place it's really rather simple to get these apart it's just basic hand tools you don't need anything else but you do need a bit of space because there's a lot of stuff coming off and you don't just want to pile it up like on top of each other so i've just set up a spare little table here to show you as an example and the other thing you need masking tape to write and stuff Film to take some pictures and just some various containers for bolts and things. I like these sort of ice cream containers because you can put like all the intake bolts in one, write intake on it, seal it up, it's good to go. So that's what I'm gonna do. Here are the bolts removed already for the bonnet. There is the rotor and there is the pickup. So that is pretty much it. Step one, soak everything down with penetrating fluid and I'm gonna start getting intake manifolds off, fuel rail off, all of that. And hopefully by the end of today, we will be down to the cam covers. Step one is just soak everything down with WD-40. Usually you don't have issues with stuck bolts on V12s, 
but we're removing everything here so everything gets a good soak. Let's make sure nothing sticks. Like I said in title, this is something I think that you can do in a weekend or two. It's really not that difficult. It is a big engine, there's a lot of things, but nothing is complicated on these. So I think if you're a home mechanic, you can definitely get this done and get this into a reliable state of working, even when it's been standing for this long. But now I'm gonna cue some music, get cracking, and get all this off. First little extra tip, to get these off over here, it is a lot easier if this fuel line's out of the way. I did that side first because I want to wait for as long as possible to crack the fuel line loose. There's no pressure in this thing, it hasn't run in two months. If you have pressure, then you can you know, disconnect the fuel pump, crank it over, and you will get rid of pressure. These are often stripped out, so this is really the only way to get them out works really well. You are never going to get them out with a regular screwdriver, but an impact screwdriver works very, very well. So I'll get that. I'm going to get this line off and then it's just the nuts on this side, that line, and I've already undone all of the, um, these were just on here, but there were zip ties on this side for this bit of wiring over here. So get that off and the fuel rail will lift off. The last thing I need to do is crack off this fuel line here. And now this whole thing should lift out of place. If I disconnected everything. Let's see. Sometimes they like to stick a little bit injectors in the inlet but there we go a couple tugs and big fuel spill there hold your finger over it move it away so you can dispose of the fuel and now one fuel rail removed so here's an example of why it's great to have just a table or work area set up here is the whole fuel rail all the mounting hardware for it. Put a lid on that. So now it's all there. One need to put it back after we replace all the fuel hoses, of course. Now, there's a lot more room for activities here. I already have the um, HT leads and all that removed. Now would always be a good time to remove that. It's at this point where it's critical not to get stuff into the engine. So that's what the masking tape is for. So I am going to put some masking tape over all of this, even though the intakes are coming off really soon. In that meantime, I could drop something down there. So clean off these areas, I'm gonna put masking tape down. You see almost all of the injector seals are actually in the intake. We'll remove those later, because I have new ones. But masking tape over that, then I can start removing the intakes, and then we are down at the cam covers. I'm gonna remove the rest of these air filter housings. You can technically remove the intakes with them in place. But, because I am also going to convert this thing from right-hand drive to left-hand drive, I will need all the space I can get when all this comes back onto the car, so I'm not going to mount these on when I put the intakes on. And that way, it's just a little bit simpler. Also, <clears throat> I'm going to be cleaning the intakes and cleaning all of this and making it look nice. So, it's a lot easier to remove things right now then to remove it later. Got the last nut to undo here on the intake. I always work from the outside in because it's a long piece of aluminum. And yeah, you need a magnet because you will drop those little nuts sometimes. And I broke my magnet tool. 
before. Let me see where did it go. There. There's that, and then you will need a magnet to get the little washer off. Or I mean, it does help. Uh, yeah, broke my magnet tool. Now this should be off. I just need to get this fuel hose off. But I'm replacing that, so I'm gonna get a knife. Just cut that. We should be able to lift this off. Let's cut it right there. Okay. We'll see. I should have removed everything. And I always double check that I got all the washers off because that's sort of the worst thing if you have a washer fall into it. It's, it's, the, it's the hose here on the auxiliary air valve that it's a little bit sticky. There we go. And there we go. Don't forget about the throttle return spring. We did that before and in the other line. So that's the last manifold off. First thing you do after you get the manifold off is I like to just grab regular shop paper towels and bunch them up and shove them down the intakes into the head. The last thing you want to do is drop anything down there because uh, then you got to get heads off. Plus, this also helps later when you're cleaning around the area. These will help out a little bit. And then when you pull them out again, you can have a vacuum cleaner ready and suck up any dirt that's collected on the top of the paper. And you should be fine. I also vacuumed around this area before even starting to get, but still, you know, there's a leaf down there. Things like that are gonna happen. Not really that big of a deal. So that is all fixed now. The next thing is to get these cam covers off. Pretty straightforward. Once again, working from the outside on the way in and they just lift straight off. They should both be loose now. They're quite long, but usually never ever stuck unless the previous owner has gone crazy with RTV, but this is a low mileage car. I don't think these have ever been off. And I'll tell you guys why when we look at the engine. Why I don't think they have been off. There are a couple of clues. It's looking really good in there. A little bit of sludge right up in there. Probably because either some short journeys or the breather in here hasn't been cleaned periodically. But it looks very good inside the engine at least. And the half moon seal came off with this one. Let's get the other side. Hmm. I may actually need to forgot about that. I need to loosen up the AC compressor. I think it actually is loose. I never think I bolted it in after I did the plugs here. I gotta loosen these up and then I can move the cam cover up. Well, you know, it actually helps if you remove every single bolt. Weird, isn't it? There is one I forgot down here. I slackened it, but I never completely removed it. A little bit more. Weird sound you're hearing in the background is a butterfly that seems to have woken up. So it kind of likes to hibernate. I think I have about five or six here in the workshop of hibernating, and this one it's woken up. It's not really spring yet, it fell a little early for that. But he's flying around. Okay. the other one and this side is much much cleaner and there we go that is everything taken down to the cam covers 
So this is what is involved if you want to replace cam cover gaskets. These have been leaking, as you can see, and that's of course why we're doing it. It's not terrible yet, but a car that's been standing for this long and everything is just going to be dry. Once you start driving it, it's going to leak a lot more. And you know, intake gaskets, a lot of other things are going to start leaking. It's just why we're doing all of this now. But everything looks absolutely fantastic in here. All the cams look really, really good. These are massive, massive chains on these. Cam on the other side looks good as well. I think it's been leaking a little bit more on this side. We can grab this light. So I do have some cleaning up to do, but everything else looks really, really good over here. When you walk away from the engine or you're doing something else, don't forget to cover it up. You don't want anything to fall down into an open engine. Just with a bed linen or something like this, a sheet or something, you can cover the whole engine with and make sure nothing bad happens. Also, here are all the parts lined up. So you have fuel rail, the intakes, cam covers. We have different bolts for everything. I'm gonna put the last bolts in a container with a lid, which are everything here from the cam covers. And that's it. Now we're down to the cam covers. And like I said, if you're doing this in just a weekend or so, this would be your Friday night after work. If I don't count my time filming and doing everything else, I'd say this would be about three hours. I've been inside and had dinner and everything. So about three hours of actually taking this apart. You take it apart pretty slowly because you don't want to drop anything and all that. So um, if you're taking your time, probably about three hours. It's not difficult. It's just a big engine. So next time we're going to start cleaning things up, start putting things back on, new gaskets, going through that. Then we're going to go through the coolant system, water pumps and all of that. And at some point before I put too much onto this engine, I'm going to start the conversion from right to left hand drive because it's a lot easier to get to things like the steering and all of that when half the engine is missing. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot, and you'll get to see the end of this car and a lot of other V12s on here. Until next time, I'm Adam. This was Live Up the Classic. I'll see you soon.